Ah yes, the task manager, something that's probably saved us all countless times when a program freezes, you can't close it, you bring up the trusty task manager, and it kills it, no questions asked. And while many of us probably take task manager for granted, it didn't always exist. Someone actually wrote it, and his name was David Plummer, he worked for Microsoft back in like the 90s, and he actually posted in the tech support subreddit on Reddit, where he basically posted a bunch of different background info about how the task manager came to be, some interesting tips that you might not have known about. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna read through his post. I thought it's definitely worth it. It's pretty interesting. So here's the post. It's called, I wrote task manager and I just remembered something and something turns out to be a whole bunch of stuff. So he says, figured I should write this stuff down before I forget it all and where better for task manager than tech support. And it's funny, he says, here's some task manager lore, which is short for folklore. It's like some backstory. He says, I'm the Microsoft a uh, Redmond 93 developer that wrote Task Manager at home in my den in about 1994, and then the NT Silverback devs let me check it into the main tree even though I was a greenhorn or basically a noob at the time. So that meant I got to bring it into work and polish it up and make it an official part of Windows where it remains to this day. So this guy basically just wrote it in his house and the senior devs actually let him put it into Windows where it still is there. He also points out that everything he's about to say is based on the XP version because he left a long time ago, probably around that time, but it's still the core app underneath. So it's possible that not necessarily everything is 100% true or still up to date based on this. So anyway, here's the tips he says in no particular order, if task manager ever hangs or crashes, start another by pressing control shift escape. When log on, we'll look for an existing instance and try to revive it for up to 10 seconds. If the old task manager, the one that's freezing, doesn't start making sense by responding with a secret code within that time, another one will be launched. And that way you'll never end up without a task manager as long as there are some system resources available. So that is not something I knew and that's definitely interesting. I have seen task manager on very rare occasions freeze up. It's like the last of all hope is gone, but it's good to know that you can actually just start another one and then it will restart itself if it hangs. Next he says task manager will load in reduced mode if resources are short, like only loading the processes page if that's what's needed to get going. It's one of the very few apps that won't just fail and bail when things go wrong. So that's also very interesting. I had no idea that it had a reduced resource mode. So it seems like even if basically your entire computer is freezing up, it's got a memory leak, it's no RAM left, it'll still try to boot up so you can cancel out anything in there. Next, if task manager ever becomes internally corrupted, kill or close it, then restart it while holding down control alt shift and task manager will reset all internal settings to factory fresh if it sees that key combo at startup. Same works for every app I've ever written, by the way, I think. Now, I'm not 100% sure if this is still true because I tried it myself, I'm running Windows 10 Pro, and I did do this Control Alt Shift and it did not reset the task manager settings. Although I have seen on other posts on the internet of people saying it did work. So I don't know what it is with my computer. Maybe it's just broken, but you can try it yourself. It might work. Next, another tip. He says, if your title bars disappear in the task manager, I guess, and you just have one of the graphs, double click the dead client space to switch back to normal mode. So that's just some blank space somewhere. This no title bar mode is a mode I added to follow the NT clock where you could remove borders as well, but it confused more people than it ever helped, I'm sure. Now I've never seen this, but I guess if you ever come across that issue, now you know how to fix it, just double click somewhere. This one's more of a fun fact. He says, I initially drew the meters as seven segment LEDs. What he's talking about here is with the task manager, it also will show you different system resource amounts like CPU usage and seven segment LEDs are like the digital clock, basically numbers that you see. So apparently at one point, instead of just the regular numerals, he had those numbers showing as the seven segment and LEDs. But then he goes on to say, but that wasn't localizable to all cultures. For example, how do you do right to left reading for seven segment LEDs for some countries like Saudi Arabia, which read right to left. So basically he's just saying where countries might read from right to left or countries that don't use uh, those certain numerals that can't be displayed on that type of display, he had to change it to something else. So this didn't last more than one version. Now here's a tip, I knew Control Shift Escape launched the task manager, but I didn't know it went further than that. He says Control Shift Escape will launch task manager without any help from the shell. So if the shell or the explorer is dead, use this key combo to bring up task manager and then restart or reset the shell. Even if your system tray is missing and gone, this combo should start it. So what he's saying is even if the task bar is gone, the Windows Explorer is gone, you can still bring up the task manager with that key combo and then you can use file run to basically restart Explorer if you have to. So that's really cool to know that you can basically start Task Manager from anywhere, even if 
a lot of the system is broken. Next, he says, if the shell can't start something or is hung, try task manager. It has a mode where it will load without any references to the shell 32.dll and allow you to start programs like CMD without the start menu. So that's really interesting. The shell he's talking about is basically like the user interface. I guess you can think of it like Windows Explorer, the start menu. So you might think, oh, if you want to start command prompt or some other program, you normally have to go in and find it in its start menu or click a shortcut. But if none of that is available, then you can start still run it just using the task manager. This next one I did know, but you might not have. He says, you can find the binary for any executing process in the process table by right clicking and pick show file location. And what he's talking about here, the binary is just like the executable file, the program file basically. So you can right click sh show uh, open file location and it'll take you exactly where that file is running from if it's a process in the task manager. And then he points out, you can also search for it online obviously if you're not show sure what a program is doing, but he doesn't know if you'll always be able to find useful info and everything. Next, interestingly, he says, there should be nothing that Task Manager can't kill. It will even escalate privilege, and if you have it, enable debug privilege to attach to and kill apps that way if needed. If Task Manager can't kill it, you've got a kernel problem, which is basically like a really deep problem. In that case, you might have to run like SFC scan now to fix any Windows files or something like that. Now on that point, at the bottom of the post, he does make an amendment on that. He says, on the notion that there are some things the task manager can't kill, there were post XP for sure, but they were intentional limits. I remember something about journalists making news by using task manager to kill the root logon session, for example, which would bug check the machine intentionally. But the fact that you could blue screen Windows NT didn't look good, I suspect, so they likely started to protect people from themselves by disallowing kill win32k.sys and other essential components. So what he's saying here is at some point, Task Manager could literally kill everything, even the Windows processes and core files itself. And apparently people got wind of that and started to, I guess, write dumb articles about it saying, oh, you can use Windows Task Manager, kill Windows and ruin the computer or something like that. And then they implemented intentional limits, which would basically prevent Task Manager from killing Windows and blue screening the computer, which I guess makes sense. But it is kind of unfortunate that, you know, it was all powerful and then they had that limited because people were dumb. Going back to where we were, he says, a lot of people don't seem to know you can add many additional columns, remove others, drag them around to reorder, etc. So you can do that. I probably showed you that before if you want to add more columns to the task manager. This one's more of a fun fact. I'm not going to read the whole thing because it's pretty complicated, but basically he's saying there's a Windows class in the code called Dave's Frame Winproc, which its purpose is to basically make it so you can resize the window without it flickering and stuff, which I guess was a challenge, and he put it in there especially to fix it. Here's more of a fun fact about the history of it. He says, Task Manager is one of the apps I'm most proud of because it's probably the first or at least most visually complicated app to ever be fully resizable in all dimensions without any flicker up until then. I was hardcore about memory and flicker in my day, so it was under 100 100K for the EXE and never flashed or crashed, which was my thing. Having the GDI32 or user32 guys down there sure helped. I don't know what that last point is, but basically he's just saying that he made it super efficient. And it turns out this David Plummer guy was way more prolific than even just making the task manager because he says, I also wrote slash ported Space Cadet Pinball, if you guys know that game. He wrote that. He wrote zip folders, worked on the start menu, the shell, calc, old 32, product activation, and some other stuff. I was in MS-DOS before that, but I doubt anyone is still supporting MS-DOS. So this guy worked on a ton of stuff that all of us probably know and love to this day. And then you can see at the end of the post, he just added a few clarifications on some of his points. So I definitely think it's really cool that he wrote all this up. Some of the stuff I already knew, but many of it you might not have, and definitely some things that I had no idea was even the case with Task Manager. He also posted a link in the thread about he has a YouTube channel, it's called Dave's Garage, so definitely gonna shout that out. If you guys wanna check that out, I'll put that link in the description if you want to see this guy's YouTube channel. He says, yes, he still does coding every day, which is really cool. And I will throw in one personal tip for the task manager because it's my favorite tip that I think everyone should enable. If you go into the task manager and click options, select always on top, that will make sure whenever you do launch task manager, including using that control shift escape one that he talked about, it will make sure the task manager always opens on the top of all windows. So this is really great if you're running like a full screen window game or something and it freezes, you can be sure that the task manager will actually pop up in front of it so you can use it to 
close the frozen program. Sometimes if you don't have it always on top, then the task manager will open up, except it's beneath the window that's frozen and then you can't access it. So that's just one thing to do. Anyway, so hopefully you guys found this video interesting. Let me know what you think down in the comments. And if you want to continue watching, the next video I'd recommend is talking about the brand new Windows terminal. You guys might not have heard that Microsoft created a new version of the command prompt. You can think of it, a new uh, UI. It's really cool. Just check it out. I'll put that link right here. So thanks so much for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video.